don't buy it the night before a test. <laughs> it's like even that's common sense. You're going to run a marathon. The night before your marathon, you buy new tennis shoes. What happens when you wear your new tennis shoes in the marathon? You look good. You look good. <laughs> you look good you look but good. then you, you get a bunch like of blisters cool. and you can't even complete the marathon. You know, you, you see what I mean? So negative around here. It's so negative. It's common, common, common sense. You know what it is? It's doing everything you can to do what? To succeed and win. There's strategies. Yeah. How did I get the what? Ah, you're working backwards on your Z table. You're getting as close as you can to what? 0 0.4500. That corresponding Z value, because your, your table that I gave you works for only pictures that look like this. From 0 to some positive Z value. So that is 45%. You're getting as close as you can. You're going to see an asterisk. Well, e yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, what's the, where does the 2.739 live? In the what? Reject the null. So you don't find oh. it just where it's shaded. You find it on the line. And then well, you're finding it, you're finding it on the line. It's going to be in what? It's the rejection region. That 2.739 uh, is to the right of your critical value. Okay. So it lives over here in the rejection region. You're rejecting the null. What do you do when you reject somebody? Cross them out. So you rejected the null. So you would write the answer as that, like that. You can say reject the null. And rejecting the null simply is verifying that this statement is valid. So I mean, you have to know. Don't just say, oh, I reject the null. <laughs> Fine. What does that mean? I mean, why are you even doing this? Because you want to know, you want to verify the claim or disprove the claim, right? You're looking at this and saying, I'm rejecting the null. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is your sample is supporting the statement or the hypothesis that the proportion of students is greater than what? 0.5. Now, you can choose to tie your shoes in front of, you know, together before the race all you want, but there's nothing more to what we just did. There's nothing more. It's just that you're going to compute these values, plug it in your calculator, see where it lives in your decision rule, and that's what it means. Your sample information via the test statistic is going to support one of these hypotheses. Maybe it's supporting your claim, or maybe it's not. OK? See what I'm saying? Let's look at the next example. Can I get rid of this right here, your procedure? You guys have that already? Step five is your decision. Here we go. Example. This was step five, your decision. Uh, the mean study hours per week is equal to 14. Now you can say the mean study hours for statistics students, OK, if you want, OK? A sample of 100 students, statistics students, reveal a mean of what? what? <laughs> Two hours? No. 
You see what I mean of what? Oh, 8.8 .8 hours. <laughs> With a standard deviation of um, 2.5 hours. That's not very consistent, right? You know, the consistency is a high value. That's standard deviation is consistency. Oh, you should. If you're a student, your job is what? Study. Okay. Use the what? What are they going to tell you now? Use the the one percent level of significance to test this what? Flame. So what's your first step? Set up your what? Hypothesis. How do you start to do that? We already started to do that. That was the second example of what a hypothesis was. And we determined even that this was a what? A null. Remember that? The null was mu is 14. The alternate is mu is not what? 14. What did your decision rule look like? Is it a left tail test, a right tail test, or a two tail test? Two tail. This is a do not reject the null, and this is a what? Reject the null. This is a what? Reject the null, okay? Our biggest issue is going to be determining critical values. Now, how do we determine critical values? Only through what? Knowledge of? How do you determine critical values? Good, knowledge of alpha. Where is alpha at? Is that alpha? What does that mean, that alpha is 1%? Does that mean you got two tails now? You got two tails. So how much is shaded on the left and how much is shaded on the right? 0.5%. Is that right? Well, if you're going to use the Z table, then you're looking for, again, the percent of the bow here that's not shaded. If this is 0.5%, what is this? Anybody know? Well, you can think of, you can think of it that way. You can say, Ah, but these two regions is what? 99%. You're right. You can think of it that way. But you're, to use your table, you want what? 49 point what? 5%. What's the critical value? Is it 2.75? 2.575? Did anybody second that? 2.575, and this is what? Minus 2.575. So here's what this means. If our test statistic is between the negative 2.575 and the positive 2.575, you do not reject the null. If it's larger than 2.575, you reject the null. If it's smaller, to the left of that negative 2.575, you reject the null. Remember, smaller values are to the left. So your sample is going to give you information to use in your test statistic. Okay. Now, did they give us sample information? What's the sample information? N is 100. What's the sample mean? 8.8. .8. What's the sample standard deviation? Okay. 
Now again, I'm going to write my um, test statistic here, this portion of the board, because I want to use all this information. What's your formula? Test statistic is x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. Okay, and the only way you really want to remember this is by writing it down over and over again, I think. Um, you don't want to just look, at, look back and forth. Yes, this is, notice this, this is about, this is a hypothesis test about a mean. So the nature of your data is very different. So what is your sample, um, sample mean? How do you know that? It says it. What's the sample standard deviation? 2.5, how do you know that? It says it. What's the sample size? How do you know that? It says it. Where did you get mu? The hypothesis. Mu is 14. So what you punch in that calculator of yours, the test statistic is 8.8 .8 minus 14 divided by 2.5 divided by the square root of 100. Put your parentheses, if you use those calculators, put your parentheses this way. You got the numerator in parentheses divided by what you have in the denominator. If you do it that way, you hit it all, uh, you can just hit enter and get your answer. Is it an 8.24? It's going to be negative. You know why? Because 8.8 .8 minus 14. Negative 20.8? Wait a minute. That's The top is going to give you a negative answer, so it is negative. Divided by 2.5 divided by square root of 100, which is really 10. I get a negative, negative 20.8. You want to enter it this way. Negative 20.8. Okay. Where is a negative 20.8? on your decision rule. Jeez, it's way over here. It's probably on the, it's on the other side of the board. What's the point? The test statistic is smaller than your critical value, very much smaller than this critical value. The point is it's in the reject the what? The null region, which means simply that. Somebody's educated guess that students are spending 14 hours per week setting statistics was pretty much off. What this sample reveals is that students are not spending what? 14 hours per week studying statistics. And that kind of makes sense because what was the sample mean? It's very much not 14. It was 8.8, .8, even with this consistency. And the size was a factor too. You know, they asked 100 people. So all that information plays into your conclusion here. Okay. Same question. What really matters? The actual answer, the number, or identifying whether you get the uh, the null? Well, the num the test statistic values you. The test statistic tells you what to conclude. But as far as as far as like what gets graded on the test, it's going to be you need to come up with the. Well, you, okay, okay, very good question. What's, good, what's getting graded? I'll tell you, what's, you want to know what's getting graded on the test? The work. I, everything. Everything. In other words, I'm going to look at the hypothesis. I'm going to look at your decision rule, meaning I'm going to really look at your critical values. I'm going to look at the test statistic value, and I'm going to look at your decision. Because what some of you guys think, you're going to say, I have a 50-50 chance of getting these answers right. Just guess. Reject the no. Do not reject the no. <laughs> And you go to work in that, with that 
game plan and you are done. They're going to fire you and you're going to cry. <laughs> and you're going to go, oh, what's wrong? You're going to say, Mr. Judge, he, was, uh, he taught me how to do this, but he didn't look at my critical values. I just guessed at his test. 